What's up everybody and welcome to my channel again. Today I got another very cool piece for you from this maker called Todd Fisher Jr. This is his new model, the Lash. Um, and this is number one of his prototype for the, uh, not prototype, but the number one liner lock that he ever made of this knife. Very, very, very nice. I just wanted to show you how cool this knife is. Um, so, a little story time. I, I reached out to Todd about when he came out with his new lash, but it was on a fixed blade. And there was also on a folder, I believe, but um, I didn't exactly like the configuration the best. Um, but, I, but he knew I wanted to get one. Um, and then I, I've been following Todd for a while now. Um, and he had this other model, which had a Warren Cliff blade, but um, he said he made it to look, I think, to resemble like a whale, if I, if I remember correctly. And it does really resemble a whale, which is not the look that I like that much. Um, and I don't really go for Warren Cliff knives. That I have a few, but that one didn't particularly appeal to me. But I thought, you know, I was going to keep an eye on this guy because he, he has a lot of potential. His brother is Frank Fisher, another one of my um, top makers that I think he's, he's very good, especially on the grind and the finishing. Um, the grind is like incredible. Um, and just the style of that, his Todd's, or Frank's knife is, is very aggressive. Um, and his father, Todd Fisher, is also a pretty good um, knife maker um, of his own right as well. He makes a lot of his own Damascus. Um, so yeah, and they're also close friends with Stan Bolson, who is another legendary knife maker. I've only had the pleasure to handle one in person, but um, it, it, was, it was very impressive. Anyways, this man is surrounded by many makers who people would consider legendary. Um, for me, I've, I've, I haven't owned a Stan Wilson before, but I have owned a Todd Fisher and a Frank Fisher before. Um, so it's natural that I go to um, the second son, which is Todd Fisher Jr. Um, so now more about this knife. When he released the first model of the lash, I immediately thought, oh yes, finally something different and something that's more to my taste. Um, it was a smaller size and I thought, you know, like the circles, the round rounding that he made it goes pretty well with the overall shape of the knife. And I was very eager to test it out. So when Todd um, wrote to me personally, hey, are you interested? Um, I said, yes, of course, I would be. Um, so we start specking out the knife and it turns out that he has never worked with zirconium before, which is what this is. Um, and, you know, I had kind of talked him into making this knife with zirconium. I explained to him my vision. I wanted zirk with, you know, the Timascus liners. Um, you know, that was the main, the main thing. Zirk with Timascus liners. The rest, um, I didn't judge. He, he was the one who chose the pivot collars and the blade, which is very, very nice fit. Um, so he said he was going to get some advice from his brother, Frank, and also from Stan on how to make zirconium. And I think that turned out brilliant. Very, very nice. It turned out very nice. Um, I worked with him, and it took like a total of only three weeks um, from the time he ordered my materials, um, which he said, you know, because he never had Cirque, he didn't, he didn't have this um, Damacore, Damasteel 
Um, and then, so the materials were quite expensive. Um, and, but he was willing to do it for me. The first week, the parts arrived, and then he took two weeks to do this all by hand. Um, he mentioned that he sanded the parts and shaped the parts all by hand with you know, hand tools, um, manually, manual labor. And this is what I really like about this knife. Um, because he is surrounded by all these legendary makers, I think that he is a little bit under, I guess, maybe like the, in popularity, he, you know, and he's like very eager to show that he's learned, he took things from these makers to his heart and he does have the skill to do it on his own. Um, so he was very eager to show the world what he can do. Um, so he put in a lot of time and effort, two weeks, two full weeks just to make this one knife, which I thought was very respectable. Um, many makers are pumping a lot more knives out per week. So I think that the attention to detail would, um, can easily be seen on this knife. Okay, sorry the camera froze a bit there. Um, so let's start. Damacore, Damasteel or Damacore blade, which is their new kind of like a San Mai um, stainless Damascus. And if you look at the pattern, very, very equal in both sides. Very nicely done. I also noticed that. Todd himself is also very good at grinding. It is almost perfectly symmetrical. Yep. Basically, it is very sharp, and you can see the plunge grind is very, very well done. I like this very much. Very sharp nice attractive blade um, and because it is a smaller size I think it is like a three inch blade um, doing this would of course make it like a fat little short stubby knife and it's quite heavy as well considering this is zirconium on both sides but man feels pretty good in the hand um, to me, I think this is a tiny bit short for me, so it feels a bit cramped when I do this. Um, otherwise, it is very good. Let's see the finishing now on the pivot and the zirconium. Very nice satin finish. Very, very well done. Very well done. Yep. Even the Timascus is jeweled. Now, I don't think you can see this, but he signed the inside as well. There is the lockup. Sorry, it's a bit disgusting in there. Um, my fault for putting a bit too much lube and then getting it, putting it in my pocket way too often, so it has a bunch of lint in there. Um, this is the other side. I love how this is almost basically the same exact thing as the other side, but there's a hole where you can put your screwdriver in. Um, very nicely done. I like how he does the colors here. The colors are all even. The colors here are all even, which I think is very, very nice. You can see how well put together this is. Very fine. Even the the core goes right in the middle. Um, this is one of the finest knives that Todd's ever made. Um, and that's coming from the mouth of Todd himself and Frank, his brother. The clip, I think the tension is a little bit a little bit stiff, but I can put it in my pocket. Um, a little bit of encouragement, but I'm sure it'll get better over time. I like the one big round standoff there. Um, 
If you notice, this is a full hidden hardware build, which is very cool. Um, I also really wanted to see his hidden hardware on this piece. Um, so yeah, basically very good finishing, great attention to detail, super sharp. This blade really reminds me of Frank's blade, but I guess because they learned it together, you know, the way it's shaped here, and there's like a stop pin right there. Like basically the functionality, the blade. And like the Frank Fisher battle, this is a lot more functional. Um, and I like that. And going to the action now. Um, the action, Todd said he made the D10 a little bit light in purpose, um, and he said that even before he sent it to me. So if you do like light switch, it might it won't come out like fully. But if you just like if you hit it at the right area and do a little push button, it just flips right out very nicely, very fast. And if you can hear, there's like a double click. Kind of, and that's because Todd puts his detent way back. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, it's very, uh, it's very high up. Usually, it's lower near here where makers put it, so that you can overcome the detent like right about here, you know, or even before. But Todd's is very far back. And at first, it, it's. Like, I'm, I wonder why he does that, because, like, a lot of people, like, you know, they're smooth closing, but this, you always get stuck on that ball. But he does do a nice ramp, so it goes over nice and easily. Um, so if you're not used to that at first, it might get annoying. I'm not, I have no idea what the benefits are of putting it behind. I mean, like, I like the sound of the action more, and it is safer. Um, but now, you know, I don't really care because I do this and I just push the blade over and it, I don't mind that much. I'm not the type of guy who needs the drop shotty knife, but I do like that it's smooth, which it is. Very smooth knife. Yeah, this guy is very fun to play with. If you're like me and you like to flip knives a lot sharp you can use it um, very tough as well and Todd is overall a very nice guy I'm sure you can reach him uh, um, and talk to him about if you want something to be done um, so yeah I think this knife is very very nice you know especially like nowadays I look at the knife less from the maker, but actually on each individual knife itself. Like each maker, they have good days and bad days. Some days they can make a good knife. Some days they can make a bad knife. Some makers are more consistent with their action and their finishing than others. Um, so sometimes you can get a knife from a good maker, but then, man, that knife has, is no good. It has, you know, it's off center. It's, it's got lock stick, um, the grind, and the, the materials aren't put together that well. And then, but then some other people report that, man, it's like the best knife ever. And then when you do look at it, it is very nice. So it's less dependent on the maker. Let's see what it did there. Less dependent on the maker, but on the particular knife itself. And I think you know, I've been going on the theme of finding a great knife from each maker. I think this is one of the best knives um, that's ever came from Todd. It is a very, very nice knife. And I love how he worked with me and he showed me some of the, you know, progress pictures and involved me in some of the, you know, decision makings. And he spent a ton of time just massaging, making this knife as, as good as he possibly can and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching. Have a good one.